Hi there. I am trying to get in the center of this screen. Um, good afternoon. I know you and I both are about ready to leave for the day, but I am glad that you joined us. Thank you. And uh, we, I just wanted you, I know I've talked to all of you, but I wanted you to at least see my face. This is who I am. And um, so if you, if we're ever in the same room, at least you'll know what I looked like. <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and get started um, and uh, we'll move from there. All right, um, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping first. So um, I wanted you, um, obviously, my name is Tamala Olsby, and I work for the Texas Education Agency. And Cody Summerall, another program specialist at TEA, is assisting me today. So he'll be kind of answering some of your questions and that kind of thing. So if you know him, you can shoot him over a, a comment or two in the questions box. Um, on the right hand side is the control panel. So if you have a question um, or just want to say something, you can do that under the question slash chat um, section. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but there are handouts in the handout section. And one of those handouts is the PowerPoint. So you may want to have that um, printed. And um, I also wanted to let you know that this webinar is going to be recorded. So though if you need somebody else to listen to it, um, don't worry about that. We will record it and then put it up on the website so that you can um, listen to it later. Or if somebody wasn't able to be here, they can certainly do that too. So we're going to go ahead and get started now. Here is our agenda. We have a lot to cover today. So um, as you will see, we are going to introduce all the people that are in our orange cohort. Orange is the best. It's especially best right now at this time of year with the fall. We're gonna go over some of the results from the survey that you all did um, several months ago. We'll talk about our schedule for the next year we will go over, then we'll get into the classroom environment things. And so we're going to go over the role of the classroom environment. We'll do uh, a little presentation on just general guidance. We're going to talk about space versus place. And you'll see what that is later. And then we'll end the presentation with um, some resources for you. So hang on. Here we go. So I wanted to um, start our discussion today just by letting you all know who is in our group. So here are the 19 of us. We have the largest cohort. So classroom environment must be a very popular subject. So you can see we have districts from all across um, our state. So we're going to turn our attention now to the survey. Um, the survey that you all um, did several months ago, I received 16 of those back. And so when you're looking at these results, I want you to remember the number 16 because that will um, be important when you're looking at these results. We will do this survey probably at the very end of our time together this year. And it will serve kind of as a BOY and then an EOY by the end of the, our time together. So this first um, slide shows um, the questions that were asked about physical arrangement. And remember, I told you there were 16 of you that answered the questions. So you can see the um, we're doing pretty good on does the classroom have enough space for large group, small group, and individual instruction. Um, you can see about half of you are comfortable with your outdoor area. It looks like we need some help in storage. 
and um, a little more than half of you said that your spaces were accessible to children with disabilities. As far as classroom furnish furnishings is, um, it looks again like the best thing is that you have sufficient materials for the number of children that are in the class. Um, the things that perhaps could be in, um, improved are the use of adaptive furniture and having a cozy space. So we're going to actually talk about that next in our next webinar. Um, but we'll go over a lot of these um, this information today. The next question was regarding the learning centers and do you have seven of them and are and then it asked a whole lot of information about the materials that were in those learning centers and this probably out of all of the questions showed that this is a huge area that we could improve as you will see the most that um, the best answers or the ones that most of you said yes to where materials within the learning centers are associated with what the students are currently studying. And that is awesome. But you will notice only eight individuals out of 16 said that. So this area is, we're gonna spend a lot of time on learning centers because I think this is a, a good area for us to concentrate on. The next question was regarding print. And again, you can see that it looked like we have print, especially things like books in the learning centers, but all of the rest of the items, whether the children have opportunities to write, whether items are labeled, whether they're labeled in the home language of the students, whether a, schedule, a daily schedule is used, a lot of you, it appears, are not using those things. So you're going to see on our schedule in a couple more slides that this helped me um, kind of plan out the year for what I think would be most helpful to you. So um, it, it was good information. This slide shows um, the information about classroom displays. So it looked like um, that the teachers use displays to help the kids like with rules or um, they have a helper chart or that kind of thing. But there were a lot of um, the items about displays that um, appears could use some improvement as well. So we are also going to spend some time on this subject. So if I had to condense all of this, this is how I would condense it. I would say the areas for potential growth included really everything about the learning centers, labeling, daily schedule, classroom displays, storage, and outdoor, um, the outdoor environment. Um, thank you so much. I know the, the survey might have taken you a little bit of time, and I appreciate you doing that. It gave me a lot of information to use. So now we're just going to go over what is our schedule like for the year. So we are going to go kind of in a little rotation. Um, we're going to do a webinar for every unit. And you're going to see that we have eight units. So we will do some kind of a webinar or information sharing um, that will be mostly from TEA to you all. So that is what we're doing today. After that, you'll have some kind of an assignment. And I'm going to try to take it easy on you. I'm not going to give you a ton of work to do. But we want to make sure that the information you're gaining in the webinar, you can actually use. So there'll be an assignment. And then we'll get all back together for our PLC meeting. 
and um, discuss, usually we will discuss either a major question or we will um, discuss the assignment that was given to you. And then we will end the unit with me calling each of you individually. And therefore we can really get down um, to more uh, of your specific unique needs. So that kind of gives you, uh, this is the schedule basically for every single unit. Here are the topics um, that um, we are going to go over during this year. Um, today's, we are doing unit one, so it will be kind of more general in nature. But starting next month, we're going to go over three learning centers. We're going to go over the block center, the math center, and the library center. And then we'll go three more centers the next month and then three more the next month. We will then talk about what is the teacher supposed to be doing when the children are learning in these centers. And the next month we'll go over the how to do a class schedule and how to do classroom displays. The next month we'll do classroom connections between child, family, and community. And then lastly, we will go over the topic of storage and the outdoor environment. So you can tell, hopefully you can tell at least, that I use the information from your surveys to develop these topics. I will put in a little caveat here that let's say we get into unit two or three and a whole bunch of other subjects come up. This list of topics is subject to change. So if I find that people really need more information on a, a, a related topic, we might alter this um, schedule. So we're gonna dig now into our first topic. So what is the role of the classroom in early learning? So what does the research say? The research, this piece of research says that the physical environment is a powerful force. It affects how we feel. It influences what we do. It determines how we interact with others. And it impacts how successful we are at reaching our goals. Children, young children, learn everything through their five senses. And so they need to taste and touch and listen and smell. And that's why the physical environment in a young child's classroom is of extreme importance. I had to put this in because I saw this on the internet and thought it was hysterical. In 2004, uh, there was a Nielsen survey and they asked either pre-kindergartners or kindergartners to finish this sentence. I wish my classroom had... So what do you think they said? It might be surprising. A pig. <laughs> I can't have one at home. So they wanted one in their classroom. Good smells. I thought that was intriguing. Bouncy tires that we could climb on inside. Goldfish and snakes and plants and worms that we could touch. Sounds like little kids, huh? A place I could be alone sometimes. Hmm. Beanies, where kids could lie down to read books or just rest sometime. So let's move on to some general guidance. If a classroom has an A++ classroom environment, where it usually has these um, things. It is usually aesthetically pleasing, it has specific areas for instruction. 
It is healthy and safe. It has great furnishings and it has learning centers. I will say this is not an exhaustive list, but this is the list that we're going to deal with today. So we're going to go over each of these in a little more detail. So aesthetically pleasing, what does Tamala mean by that? It means that, you know, a little child, a small student, even the teacher spends a great deal of time at in their classroom, especially if you're doing full day. So think of that. The kids need open spaces. They need some softness. They need colors in the room, but they don't need necessarily bright colors. Um, pastel usually are the better colors to go with because they have a sense of calming, a calming effect on, on small children. The lighting is important. Have you ever gone into a room and there's just too much light in it or it's too dark? It needs to have ventilation. You know, like the little kid says, I want good smells. <laughs> and so um, things can get stinky in a pre-kindergarten classroom. The areas within the classroom should be clearly defined. There should be a good sense of sound. Um, it shouldn't, the classroom shouldn't be so big that you feel like you're echoing, but it also should not be so small that you can hear a pin drop. There should be plenty of accessible labeled storage. And the classroom should look like young children use it, not adults. So thinking about all of this, a pre-kindergarten classroom should not look at all like a fifth grade classroom. It should look different. It also should have areas for instruction. This first picture shows um, a teacher with a large group of children. Um, it's not that large, but um, she uh, it looks like she has all the children together. So there needs to be a space for that in the classroom. Where can the children and the teacher gather all together? Perhaps to read a book, perhaps to sing some songs, that kind of thing. Another area to think about in a classroom is your small group area. Where could you, if you wanted, if a teacher wanted to work with a smaller group of children on some of their specific needs, where could that happen in the pre-kindergarten classrooms that you have? You'll see this um, teacher here is working with uh, three students. So do you have a place like that in your pre-kindergarten program. And lastly, it's always helpful for there to be room where a teacher can work individually with a child. You can see this teacher's even laying on the floor with the child, how fun. Um, but they are definitely, um, looks like they're doing some counting there, so they're doing a math experience, but she's doing it with that child individually for some reason, it's hard to say just by looking at the picture, but it is important in a classroom to have all three areas in the room. The classroom also needs to be healthy and safe. So when you're thinking about that, I want you to reflect on the following items. The fixed elements, and by that I mean what things are in the room that you can't move? Like you can't move the sink. If you're lucky enough to have a bathroom in the classroom, you can't move it. So there are things in the room that are fixed and so the environment needs to adapt to it. Otherwise, the environment is pretty adaptable. It's really important that students can be seen 
by the teacher or whatever, whoever, school personnel in the classroom at all times. The children really should not ever be left on their own, not at this age. There should be very easily identifiable traffic areas so that the children aren't jumping over a box or walking around something. They can easily see where they should be walking. The classroom should be clean and well maintained. So how often, you know, these little guys are sitting on the floor. <clears throat> they spill things. They cough and don't, or they sneeze and don't use Kleenexes sometimes. So it is really, really, really important that more attention is spent to making sure that classroom is clean. So when you're thinking about that, how can you help the pre-kindergarten teacher um, with that? How often is the trash taken out? Um, that kind of thing. And is the classroom accessible for students of all abilities? If, if your classroom had a child in a wheelchair, is, are the traffic areas um, large enough that they could maneuver around the classroom pretty easily? And then young children have a lot of needs, mostly because they're just young. Um, when they have to go to the bathroom, they have to go to the bathroom now. And so how do you deal with that? Um, they have to wash their hands a lot, um, whether it's after um, toileting or before they're eating or because they just painted. Um, hand washing is a very um, much used area in the room. And children, even in pre-kindergarten, need a personal space to put their stuff. You know, the older elementary kids, they can put their stuff in a desk. Where does a pre-kindergarten student put their stuff? Where do they put their jacket? If they had a backpack, where would they put it? Most pre-kindergarten classrooms have cubbies and there's little hooks on them so that a child can hang up their jacket and that kind of thing. But all of these um, are really unique to the needs of a young child and should be thought through when looking in um, the environment. We're gonna spend a little time now talking about furnishings. So thinking about the furniture, the shelves, the chairs, all of that kind of thing in the classroom. Are, is the furniture sturdy? Is it in good repair? Do the chairs fit the size of the students? And how do you adjust that? What if you have a classroom of three and four year olds? How do you do that? Um, what if you have a child that's really small or really large? Um, have you thought through that? Um, can the classroom be rearranged? Is it flexible, depending on what the teacher is trying to teach? Is there a variety of seating options? And again, does it permit inclusion um, for students of all abilities? Um, we also talked a little bit about learning centers. We're gonna go over this pretty quickly because we are gonna be spending, as you can tell by our schedule, three entire units on this subject alone. But overall, when you're thinking about learning centers, we recommend highly that you have seven of them in a pre-kindergarten classroom. And they should be organized. They should be easily available to students. The materials in the centers should be um, varied in their, in their difficulty. Um, they should be adequate for the number of children that you plan to have in that learning center. Um, the materials need to be rotated to keep the students' interest. The materials need to have some association with the theme or the unit or the project that the teacher is focusing on. The materials even need to reflect where the students come from. 
Um, so is there um, uh, different cultures and um, ethnicities in the materials that are in the learning centers? And are they labeled? Do they have, um, can children tell where to put um, different items? Um, the learning centers also should be clustered because of a, of a reason. So let me give you an example. The example here is the library and the writing area. Both of those are very quiet, usually, centers. And so it's a good um, idea to put them together. You don't want to put the library by the block area. The block area tends to be loud. <laughs> and so um, those kind of uh, learning centers should be um, uh, separated in some way or in at least different parts of the classroom. And print and opportunities for children to write should be available in all of the learning centers. And we're going to spend time with each of these things in uh, the next units that we go over. So I now want to find out what learning centers do you currently have in your classrooms? So um, think about that for a second. And I am going to bring up a um, what's called Mentimeter and um, So give me a second to bring that up. There we go. So what I'd like you to do, if you would not mind, is to use your either telephone, yes, you can get out your cell phone, um, or your laptop, your computer, wherever you're at, and go to www.minty.com. And it will ask you for a code. And so the code for us is this 877397. And then you would answer the question. So there's a question there for you to answer. So click on the centers that you have and then press submit at the end. And then we're going to see what it does on this slide. Woo! Whoa, that was fast. <laughs> Somebody must have answered them. Somebody has all of them. How cool is that? And you'll notice that there are more than seven here. Whoa, it's changing a little. It looks like art, writing, the library, math. Ooh, writing went down a little. Library, math, and creative art seem to be the most popular. A lot of you have blocks and writing and math and science also. It looks like the lowest one is sand and water. So I will... Um, that will be interesting, I think, for you when we go. We're going to use that as one of our learning centers that we're going to go over specifically. Just going to give you about one more minute if anybody else is there. So the, mo the most popular center appears to be the library center, and that's one of the ones that we're going to go over next month. So next month, just to remind you, we're going to go over blocks, the library listening, and math. So those, at least, uh, it looks like there's a good portion of you that have them. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, it was helpful to me to kind of get a sense of where you all are at and um, 
so that's awesome. Thank you so much. So we're now going to kind of shift gears. I just um, like threw a bunch of information at you, um, but hopefully it was helpful for you to get a sense of if someone was going to say, what are some general guidance that someone should know about how to set up a pre-kindergarten classroom? That's what I attempted to do with the last several slides. And we're going to kind of turn our, uh, make a shift here. I have written here space versus place. And what I want you to do is um, I want you to think of a place in your childhood where you felt safe, where you felt secure, you, you weren't afraid. You might have even been awestruck, maybe because it was so beautiful. You felt very included there. You know you were meant to be there. You felt accepted. There's usually an emotional tie to a place. You felt respected. People knew who you were. They liked you or loved you. Um, and they, they liked that you were there. You even felt maybe important. Attention was being paid to you. Most importantly, you didn't want to leave. You would have stayed there forever if you had been, <laughs> if they had let you. What I would like you to do is in, well, before that, I, I want to show, I want to share with you my places. So these are two, I couldn't choose one, so I chose two. So I want to explain where my places were. This is a very old photograph, as you can tell. It shows my mother and father. As a matter of fact, my mother there is, um, I am in utero there. <laughs> and it has my, uh, one set of my grandparents, that's my father's mother and father. This is a picture of their farm. Um, my father, grandfather was a cotton farmer. And the child kneeling down is my dad's younger brother, my uncle. And he's very, uh, he's a favorite of mine. And when I ever went to grandma and grandpa's house, I felt like I owned the world. Uh, grandpa would make sure we never got in trouble. <laughs> so if we did something, he'd hide it. Uh, grandma always had more than one kind of ice cream in her freezer. Isn't it funny what you remember? But this was this, I have a very strong emotional tie to my grandma and grandpa's house. More in adulthood, I chose this place. This is in Yosemite. I used to live in California and I lived approximately an hour from here. And as you can see, it's beautiful. Uh, massive mountains, waterfalls, greenery, um, animals. It, it's, it is gorgeous. And you feel like an ant in a big world when you're there. Um, but it's very peaceful. Um, it's very quiet. Um, it's serene. I, I love all, both of these places. So what I would like you to do, if you do not mind, is in the questions, I would like you to type in one of your places. 
if you would not be, if you would not mind sharing. Where did you feel safe, secure, included, accepted, respected? Very important, and you did not want to leave. Okay. Sue says, uh, my grandma's house, I see at a church retreat, retreat. Awesome. Oh, grandma's getting a lot of votes here. Ooh, at the family ranch. Awesome. Aw, playing in my room with my mom. How awesome. Home. Wow, don't we wish all of our children felt that. Any others? Ah, church camp. Ooh, South Padre Island. Ooh, and you can still go there. It's only one hour away. Oh, that sounds fun. I want to go. How awesome. Well, you know what? The, the items that I shared with you in um, the general guidance, we didn't talk about places. So I... I'm going to see if I can Oh, sorry. I didn't know I was going to take this long. When you're talking about things like how many square feet are in the room? How many learning centers are in the room? Can you see every child? Is the lighting good? Is the ventilation okay? You're talking about space. And I'm kind of making fun of it right now, and I, I don't really mean that because it is considered foundational. Um, if you don't have the foundation set in place, um, it's hard to get to the emotional place of a space, of a place. So those things are all, sorry about this, you have to go through all of this. But when you're really thinking about a place, I want to point out to you that none of us mentioned a classroom. We didn't even mention school. Why is that? Can we make our classroom environments a place for children? I think we can, and I think it's important that we do. Beauty tied to emotions helps cognition. There's much research on this. Um, it entices people to learn more. And so I'd like you to reflect on that a little bit. What do you see when your students, what do your students see when they go into the classroom? And if you've never done this, now don't do this if you're old and crickety like me, but I, if you're not and you've got good knees, I would really encourage you to get on your knees and walk through your classroom. That way you'll know exactly what a four-year-old sees. So what do they see? What do they see and smell and hear? What do they want to touch in your room? What is in the room that helps your students to feel safe and secure? What helps your students feel like they belong there? That's their place. 
And most importantly, what makes the student not want to leave? Well, that is your assignment. So it's a pretty easy one. We're going to go light on you this first unit. But what I would like you to do is to think of that. You might want to review part of this uh, webinar, but I want you to come up with what is one thing that you could do to make your classroom a place for students. And in our upcoming PLC, you'll have the opportunity to share what you came up with. I'm, I'm intrigued to hear your answers. I think that will be uh, exciting. So again, we are right in the middle of unit one. So we did our webinar, we're almost done. That was today. Your assignment is to think through that um, space versus place and how can you help your classrooms to be more of a place for students. Our PLC will be done on October 2nd at 10 o'clock. And remember at the PLC, we are asking that only one person from each LEA participate because we're actually gonna be talking. Um, I'm gonna give you the mic, you're gonna be able to talk. So um, we're, um, it'll just be really, it's gonna be challenging with 19, but, um, and we want everyone to participate. So it would be, it would be too much if it, we have more than one participant per LEA. So if you could do that for us, that would be awesome. And then I will phone you um, during October 8th. And um, in the handout section, earlier I told you there were three handouts. One was the PowerPoint. One of the handouts I know I've sent to you. It's a schedule. And on that schedule, you can actually sign up right now for every webinar and every PLC so you know you've got them done for the rest of the year. So that would be a really good handout for you to uh, look at. And then the last handout that is there is the phone call schedule. So if you have forgotten, oh my, when did I say we were going to chat on the phone? Look at that schedule. That will remind you. And if you are not on that schedule, I think I had a couple of you that did not respond to the phone calls. So um, don't hesitate now to look at that schedule and then let me know when we can do a phone call. At that phone call, I want to let you know that what we're going to be talking about is your survey. So the survey that you did, we're going to be a little more specific on your survey so that we can come up with some goals for us for the year. So we're almost done here. I wanted to give you some resources. So the information that you saw today was from one of these places. So if you don't, uh, several of these are really good books. Um, and so if you don't have these in your library and have some money to spend on some things, you may wanna um, look at these. I also wanted you um, to be reminded that we have a SharePoint site and the link is there. And I have already uploaded these documents that you see here. And these documents all have something to do about uh, learning environments. So you might wanna check those out. And of course, you can always call me or email me. Here is our whole division just in case you needed to know that. And just as a reminder, what we did today, we went over who's in our cohort, we talked about our survey results, we went over our schedule for the year, and then we talked about classroom environments, we talked about space versus place, and then uh, we talked a little bit about some resources for you. Are there any questions? If you have a question, you can go ahead and type it into the question section of the control panel. 
and I'll be quiet for a little while to give you a little time to write something in. All right, well, seeing none, we will go on to the last slide. Um, education is a natural process carried out by the child and is not acquired by listening to words, but by experiences in the environment. Maria Montessori said that. So we are going to be on a journey together this year. I am totally looking forward to it. I um, hope that this webinar was helpful to you, and um, I will see you next at um, the PLC. If you have questions about the assignment or anything that was discussed today, don't hesitate to call me or email me. Thank you. I know it's the end of the day and everyone's tired, so thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it.